hello wonderful children of god welcome once again to another session of our online bible study class i hope you are good and you are happy to be here today last week we learned about jesus triumphant entry into jerusalem and today we are going to learn about what happened afterwards but before we start today's session shall we close our eyes and say a word of prayer heavenly father we thank you for all that you've been doing for us we thank you for sending your son jesus christ to come and die for us as we are celebrating easter remember the greatest sacrifice that has ever taken place when jesus christ died on the cross to save us from our sins to bring us salvation we are truly grateful for it we thank you also for taking care of us throughout the whole year and the whole week also and for taking care of our family members protecting and guiding us in all that we do are going and are coming in we say thank you to you as you are coming to have our lesson we pray and ask you to be here with us and teach us help us to understand and also to remember and apply or work with what we learn here this and many other blessings we ask to your son jesus christ name we pray thanksgiving amen So our memory verse today is taken from the Bible, which is the Word of God. And we learned for some time now, we've been learning for some time now that the Bible is divided into two parts. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. And today's memory verse is taken from the Old Testament. And remember that whenever we open our Bible, the small numbers are the verses and the big big numbers are the chapters okay what do you know about sheep do you know anything about sheep if you know anything about sheep then please tell your mommy or your daddy or whoever is close to you what you know about sheep and i'll tell you one characteristic or one character of a sheep and then you compare it to what you said and let's see if you got what i wanted to tell you are you finished telling them <laughs> okay so sheep can easily be led astray. That is, they can be led from safety into danger very easily. Okay. And do you also know that you and I, we are like sheep also. Yes, we are like sheep. And our memory verse today is telling us that and also going to explain why we are like sheep. Our memory verse, we shall read from the word of God what our memory verse says. So our memory verse for today is taken from Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 and it reads, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6. Amen. Shall we read our memory verse again? Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 All we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all So what does our memory verse today say All we like sheep All we like sheep means you and I are like sheep because we are easily led astray from safety into danger which is sin we have turned everyone to his own way. This means that we go our own way instead of God's way. And God's way is the perfect way for us. Yes, we prefer to go our own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. When Jesus died on the cross, he, God placed on him your sin and my sin. So when Jesus died, he saved us from our sin. So if you are here today and you've already accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, then you've been saved from your sin. And remember to always thank God for this sacrifice, this greatest show of love. But if you are here and you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, then you have not been saved from your sin and you are going your own way, which is not making God happy. So when we finish with our Bible lesson, I'll teach you how to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior 
so that you can also become a child of God. Our lesson for today is taken from Luke chapter 23, verse 26. Luke, and also Luke chapter 23, verse 33 to 49. And Matthew chapter 27, verse 33 to 66. So the Jewish leaders were very, very happy and pleased with themselves because they have tried the whole night to accuse Jesus, tell lies about him, and have him sentenced to death. And they finally got their way. They succeeded. Pilate gave the order for Jesus to be crucified. So the soldiers put a heavy wooden cross on Jesus' shoulders. And Jesus walked through the narrow streets of Jerusalem, carrying this heavy cross. And as he was going, there were people were gathered and watching him. Some were making fun of him. They mocked him. They laughed at him. They insulted him. But others too, when they saw how Jesus was suffering, they cried. They were weeping when they saw his suffering. So Jesus was feeling very weak. His body was wounded from all the beatings he had received. So when the soldiers saw this, they looked through the crowd to see if they can find a strong-looking man to carry the cross. And then they saw this man called Simon, who was from a city in North Africa called Cyrene. So they called Simon of Cyrene to come and carry Jesus' cross. They led Jesus up to a hill called Calvary, which was outside of the city. And when they got the, hmm, the followers of Jesus, some of the followers of Jesus who had followed to see what would happen, were very, very, very horrified and sad when they saw what they did to Jesus. They placed the cross on the ground and Jesus was nailed on the cross. They nailed, put big nails through his hands and also his feet. And then afterwards, they dug a hole in the ground and raised the cross up. Oh, how Jesus must have suffered. On that day, two more crosses were raised. One on the left side and one on the right side of Jesus. And these men on the crosses were hardened criminals. They were being punished because of the wrong things that they've done. Unlike Jesus, who had not done anything wrong and didn't deserve any punishment. You and I are also sinners. Now, memory verse today tells us that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You go your own way when you sometimes talk back to mommy or to your daddy or to your teachers. And sometimes you are also rude to them. And there are times even when your parents call you to send you, you pretend as if you haven't heard. Or sometimes when you're in your room, then you do as if you're asleep. But meanwhile, you're not asleep. You're wide awake. When you do these things, it doesn't make God happy. It means you're going your own way. And there are also times... When we try to do the right thing, we try to obey God, but it is so hard to do so. It is difficult for us to do so because we are born with the want or the desire to do the wrong thing, to sin, to say things or do things or look at things or think about things. That does not make God happy, which is a sin. Sin keeps us away from God. And God hates it when we sin. God hates sin. He cannot be near sin. In fact, we deserve to be kept very far away from God, forever in a place of darkness and suffering and sorrow, because we are sinners. The two men who were crucified with Jesus were sinners who deserved to be punished. Many people in the crowd wanted to see Jesus die. They made fun of him. And even the soldiers who had crucified Jesus gambled on that day to see who was going to keep Jesus' robe, his clothes. So they shouted along with the crowd and made fun of Jesus. They said he saved others, but he can't save himself. Even the criminals on the cross were also mocking Jesus. They made fun of him and they said, if you are the Christ, then save yourself and then save us too. As Jesus hung on the cross in great pain and suffering, he prayed for those who crucified him. You know, sometimes when people say things, mean things, and say things that hurt us, 
we are tempted to insult them back or also do things to hurt them jesus could have done the same he could have insulted them he could have cursed them he could have commanded them to die and all these things would have happened but he didn't do so because of his love for them he forgave them and rather prayed and told god that father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing that's the same way we should behave when people hurt us or say mean things to us. We should rather pray for them instead of fighting with them or insulting them. Jesus loved those who crucified him. He was dying on the cross so that he could forgive them their sins. A sign was written by the governor Pilate and it was placed on top of Jesus' cross. And on the sign it read, Jesus of Nazareth. King of the Jews. A few of Jesus' friends had gathered to see what was going to happen to Jesus, and among them were also his mother Mary and some of the women who were his followers, and also his disciple John was there. They must have been very, very sad and cried in grief when they saw the suffering that Jesus was going through. Meanwhile, Many people in the crowd continued to mock Jesus. They made fun of him. But when all this mocking and, and insulting was going on, one man stopped. Can you guess who that was? It was one of the criminals on the cross. He stopped making fun of Jesus. And when the other criminal was insulting Jesus and mocking him, he told him to stop. That we have done something wrong and we are being punished. But this man doesn't deserve it. He's not done anything wrong. And then he turned to Jesus and said, Please remember me when you come into your kingdom. This man knew that Jesus was dying and will soon return to his father in heaven. And only by calling upon Jesus was he going to get saved. And although Jesus was suffering at that moment on the cross and was dying and bleeding, he still loved this man and looked at him with so much love and kindness and promised him that tonight you will be with me in paradise. Oh, how the man must have been so happy to have his sins forgiven for Jesus to promise to give him life in heaven. He must have felt so, so, so thankful for that. Are you also thankful for what Jesus has done for you? If you have called on Jesus as your Savior, thank him for willingly coming to die for your sin and taking the punishment that was meant for you. If Jesus hadn't suffered and died for you, you would have had to pay a very terrible price for your sin and you would have never been able to live with God in heaven. So this criminal was so thankful for what God, Jesus has done for him. Jesus had given him life in heaven. Time must have passed very slowly as Jesus was suffering and was in great pain. At that noon, the whole sky became dark as if it was in the night. For three hours, an unusual darkness continued as Jesus, God's only perfect son, carried the sins of the whole world on him. He carried the sins of the whole world on him at that moment. How he must have suffered. The Bible says, Jesus became sin for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. And during that time, Jesus was alone. God had left him. God the Father had left him. Because God the Father cannot be near sin. He cannot stand sin. And at that moment, Jesus was carrying the whole whole of the world are sins on him. Jesus must have felt very lonely. In fact, at a point, he even cried out to God and said, My God, my God, why have you left me? Finally, knowing that he has taken the full punishment for sin, Jesus cried out, It is finished. He had completed all that was necessary for sin to be forgiven. Even your sin can be forgiven because of Jesus Christ. He paid a very heavy price for every sinful thing you've ever done, every lie you've told, every insult, 
everything you've taken that doesn't belong to you jesus paid for it all and he did this so willingly the bible tells us in first john chapter 1 verse 7 that the blood of jesus christ his son cleanseth us from all sin jesus blood the only blood that could pay for our sin he shed it on the cross he wasn't forced he did it willingly out of his great love for us he says died for us and his precious blood flowed and this blood is what has cleansed us from our sins jesus completed all that was necessary for sin to be forgiven jesus said father into your hands i commit my spirit then he bowed his head and died a soldier even came up and used a spear to pierced Jesus' side just to make sure that Jesus was truly dead. At that moment, Jesus was dead. And do you know, this was no ordinary death. When Jesus died, something happened. There was a great earthquake. The whole ground rumbled and it shook as God's only son died that day. And something even more amazing happened. The curtain that divided the holy place in the temple divided into two. It got torn into two from the top to the bottom. And this was a curtain that separated the people from the special place where only the priests entered once a year to offer sacrifice for sin. At that time, if you dared to enter that place, you would something terrible would have happened to you. You could have died immediately. But when Jesus died and paid the price for our sin, that curtain got torn into two. And this means that the way had been open for us to come directly to the Father. Isn't that wonderful? That is what the death of Jesus did for us. Open the way for us to be able to come to the Father directly. Some Roman soldiers saw everything that had happened to Jesus. And they started to proclaim, truly, this man was the son of God. So when Jesus died, a very wealthy man, a rich man, who was also Jesus' friend and a follower of Jesus, whose name was Joseph of Arimathea, he went to Pilate to get permission to remove Jesus' body from the cross. So Pilate gave him the permission and he removed Jesus' body on, from the cross. And then he and one of Jesus' disciples took the body of Jesus and wrapped it lovingly in a white linen cloth. And then they took it to a new tomb that Joseph of Arimathea had bought for himself. It was carved in a rock okay, from stone. So they put Jesus' body gently in the tomb and then a big stone was rolled to cover the entrance of the tomb. The Jewish leaders were so happy. Finally, Jesus had died, so they were happy. But even though they were happy, they were still not satisfied. So they went to Pilate and went to tell him that when Jesus was alive, he told people that when he dies on the third day, he's going to rise up from the dead. So that means that they are suspecting Jesus is going to Jesus' disciples are going to the tomb to go and steal his body, remove it from there, and deceive people that Jesus has risen from the dead. So they asked Pilate to put a special seal on the stone covering the entrance and also assign soldiers to go and guard the tomb. So just go and stand there to make sure that nobody comes in there. So Pilate did exactly as the Jewish leaders asked and assigned soldiers there and also put a seal on the tomb. So I'm sure the soldiers were wondering who this Jesus was that they had to come and come and guard his tomb. They didn't realize that Jesus was the person who had died for their sins, just as he has died for you and I our sins. Do you realize that Jesus died for your sins? So if you are here today, you've never asked Jesus to come into your, your heart, but today you have heard about what happened to Jesus on that day when he died on the cross to save you from your sin then you can pray this special prayer with me so that you can also have your sins forgiven and become a child of god so if you are ready
Please close your eyes and pray this special prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to come and save me from my sins. I accept that I am a sinner and I repent of all that I've been doing that does not please you. I ask Jesus to come into my heart, to come and wash away my sin with his precious blood. I ask him to come and be my Lord and my personal Savior and to help me to live a life that will please you God alone so that one day I'll be able to be with you in heaven. Help me also to study your word and to go in you and to obey you. This and many other things I ask with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you have prayed this special prayer, that means you are now a child of God and you can be with Jesus one day in heaven. So learn more about God by reading the Bible and also by praying. And if you are here, you are listening or watching today, and you've already accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, then you should never forget this great sacrifice of love that Jesus did on your behalf, taking on your sin, the punishment that was meant for you. He did all that willingly because he loves you so much. So every time you remember this, take a moment and say thank you to God for coming to die for your sins because he deserves all your thanks. And also, tell someone about Jesus. Tell someone that Jesus loves them and Jesus came to die for their sins too. Don't forget to do it, okay, this week. Tell someone Jesus loves you. Jesus died for your sins. Thank you all so much for being part of today's online Bible study class. Have a blessed week. Continue to take care of yourselves and see you next week. Bye.